Good morning, 7th grade. This week, we're going to be finishing our discussion concerning nouns. Today, lesson number 11, a positives. On the top of the page, please place your first and last name. Class 7. And today's date, October 5th. Thank you. Our study of appositives is kind of like synonyms. An appositive restates or renames a noun. Oftentimes, it renames or restates the subject of the sentence. Other times, it modifies the object of the preposition or the direct object. We're going to see that appositives can be single words or it can be more than one words and we would call that a phrase. My brother, comma, Jean, comma, will accompany me to the boat. Notice highlighted in lavender is the appositive. On your paper, on the top of page 69, you will notice that that word is in bold print. Highlighted in aqua, my brother will accompany me to the boat. Those words are a sentence. They could stand all by themselves without the appositive. So as my definition states, it's placed next to another noun to add more information about it. You're also going to be noticing as we go through these exercises that if it's at the beginning of the sentence, modifying, restating the subject, it's going to be separated by a pair of commas. Notice the pair of commas in this one. Raji Pabajan, a distinguished geologist, will speak at the science club meeting. Again, we notice the words are separated by commas and could be left out of the sentence because Raji Pabajan will speak at the science club meeting is a simple sentence by itself. The purpose of a, an appositive is to restate or rename the noun. It is added information, and if it modifies the subject of the sentence, it will be separated by a pair of commas. I can clearly see that in this first example and in the second example. There are a couple of exceptions to those rules. And we're going to look at them right now. If you scroll down your page and look at number five. Just a couple of minutes ago, I said that other times it can modify the object of the preposition or the direct object. And when it does that, it's going to be at the end of the sentence. Notice the one comma. There's not two commas. There's one prepositional phrase in that movie. Subject I, predicate had, direct object job, as an extra. This is the object of the preposition as. What kind of extra? An actor in a group scene. It's set apart by a comma, it goes back and describes extra. These words highlighted in green are the appositive. Notice these all go backwards. What kind of trucks, large and small cargo carriers, describes truck? It goes backwards. The smallest doghouse modifies poodle. 
excuse me, the smallest house dog modifies Poodle. My uncle from Wisconsin modifies Jerry. A large department store modifies Macy's. You could say trucks come in all colors. A toy poodle makes an excellent pet. Jerry took me to the Packers game. Macy's is centered in New York. In that movie, I had a job as an extra. As we stated in the definition, it is adding to the meaning of the sentence. And it's set apart by commas. As we look down through number 17 on this page, highlighted are those appositives. You can either underline them, or if you have a highlighter handy, you can highlight them just as I've done here. Notice that if it follows the subject, there is a comma before it and a comma after it. In green, we have examples like this one here in number five. Notice the one comma. Notice that it's at the end of the sentence. I finished the hole with a birdie. Only two strokes. That's the definition it describes. In golf, if you get a birdie, only two strokes. Number 13, I would love a bright red Porsche, a sports car. Notice the one comma, a sports car goes back to and describes Porsche. Camelot was defended by King Arthur's court. That's a sentence, but there's something that describes court, the object of the preposition by. The Knights of the Round Table describes the court. All of these class on page 69, numbers 1 through 17, are called the positives. They all describe a noun and they all point back to the noun. Each and every one of these examples goes backwards. Now when I turn over to the next page, if you'd please look on side number 70, you will notice number 20 is an exception to the rules of the first 19 sentences. Highlighted in gray, I have the appositive, but you notice it's the beginning of the sentence. It doesn't have anything to point back to, so it must point forward, not back. This is an exception to the rule. Once in a while, we'll see them at the beginning of the sentence, and it will point forward. The simple sentence is, my grandma worked in a library all her life. What describes grandma? An excellent librarian. This one points forward, not back. My takeaway from today is that a positive restates or renames a noun. Oftentimes the subject of the sentence. If it's at the end of a sentence, it modifies the object of the preposition or the direct object. My first 19 examples show me examples of a positive that point back. Number 20 is an exception to the rule where it points forward to the subject of the sentence. first part of your assignment. Please put your name on the top of the page. Class 7, date October 7th. Now let's focus on exercise number 2. Exercise number 2 on page number 70. You have 20 sentences. And you can either underline the appositive or the appositive phrase, or you can highlight, as I've done here, your choice, either underline or highlight, as I did when we went through our examples. Kaylee, my dog, 
is a mixture of the German Shepherd and Collie. So my first part, I underlined or highlighted the appositive. Now I need to recognize where is it located in the sentence. I note that I need to put a comma after Kaylee before my and after dog before is. We notice that that follows the rule from the examples up above. Alice visited Dave, her second cousin. Who is Dave, her second cousin? Alice visited Dave is the simple sentence. I'm putting a comma after Dave because that is the positive. Once again, your assignment for tomorrow. Work through the 20 exercises on page 70. Your choice. Underline each a positive or a positive phrase or highlight each a positive or a positive phrase. Then, each one of these positives needs commas. If it's at the beginning of the sentence, like number 20, put the comma after. There will be one comma. If it's at the end of the sentence, put one comma. If it's after the subject, you put two commas, as we had once again in our example to exercise number two. Tomorrow, we will review this lesson number 11, and we'll talk a little bit more about appositives. As we look forward to this week, we will then have an opportunity to review the different kinds of nouns, and we'll be able to compare and contrast those and to be able to separate out those that we call contractions. We'll be reviewing, and then at the end of the week, we'll be writing a test on nouns. If you have any questions on the work that we completed last week concerning nouns, or if you have any questions concerning the appositives that we talked about today, um, please make sure that you send me a message in GoGuardian, and I will help you um, to understand those things that right now are a challenge. Have a great Monday. And we'll talk tomorrow more about nouns.